Well, hello everyone. I'm Beth English and I'm here with Sergio Gomez and we're going to talk about how to make art you love every time. What do you think about that, Sergio? I love that topic, Beth. Good to see you, my friends. Uh, super happy to be back here with you. I think that's a great topic, you know, how to make art that you love every time. That is awesome because I think that's something that we all want to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true? I mean, how many times have we been in our studios just kind of feeling defeated, like there's something that's not right with our work and we don't know if we've just lost our gift or we just should quit altogether. Sometimes I think mm -hmm. we have these dramatic moments where mm -hmm. we contemplate the quality of our art when really we just need to take a step back and, and just be our best artist. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how to do that. I love that. I love that thing. We have all been there. You know, I can remember as you're talking about, I can remember like specific times in my career where I've hit a wall and for, you know, for a period of time in which like, I feel totally stuck. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I've been there too. And the reason that I've been on this path and I'm talking about this a lot in the videos that we do is because there was a time in my life when I was creating a lot of art and I was selling a lot of art, but it wasn't art that I loved. I could feel it like deep in my soul, like that I did not want to be making this art, but I had started this, you know, type of work with a certain look and people were buying it and they loved it, but I didn't love it. And I liked being an artist, but I didn't like it in that way. And there was this one time I can remember just crying over some artwork. Like I was exhausted and I just didn't want to do it. And I had gotten to my limit when it came to that. And so I had a big shift and I stopped making that type of artwork. And I started a whole new style of art. One that was like, my soul had been calling me to do. I had visions like I could see the art so clearly, but I hesitated for so long because I told myself, who's going to buy artwork like this? No right. one. And what's so crazy about it is that I sold tens of thousands of dollars worth of artwork in this new style. Whereas I was not selling that type of artwork in the old style that I was creating. So mm -hmm. it just really surprised me that this feeling that this calling I had to create this type of artwork was actually very successful. And all I had to do was listen to myself. And so that's one of the secrets of how to make art you love every time is learn to listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. I love that because it is true. Sometimes, you know, we can get ourselves, uh, uh, kind of get very influenced by what we see, by what we read, by what we see other people doing on Instagram. And all of a sudden we start to follow a trend or a look, you mm -hmm. know, that may not be true to ourselves, but because we see other people doing it and maybe because they see that it's selling for them or so, maybe if I do it, you know, it will work out for me. So, it, you know, it's very easy to get influenced by those things and not really, as you said, you know, taking the time to listen to what is it that I really, really want to do in the Instagram mm -hmm. that comes from the heart. So I think when I it comes from the heart, it, you know, others will connect to it. That is such a great point that you made. I'm so glad you brought that up because during that time that I was making art that I didn't love, and I made this big transition to making art that I did love, I was going through therapy and for trauma recovery. And what I was learning was that I could actually rewire my brain, that I could change my brain. And so I started studying the brain and I started studying all these different ways that I could change my habits. And so since I was already in this big change with my art, I used art making as a way to help process some of these changes in my brain that I was doing. And so as I was creating the art, I was speaking to myself in ways that were very loving and I was creating in a way that was very loving. And so one of the other points I want to bring up is when you're creating, do it in a very loving way to yourself. Listen to how you're speaking to yourself about the artwork that you're making, about the process that you're on. If you're beating yourself up along the process, you're not setting yourself up for success. I mean, I know that we are all familiar with that tortured artist sort of like mm -hmm. story, but like, think about how much art has been made out of fear and sadness, but then think about how much art has been made out of love and joy. And so I just want to like turn that on its head and just encourage you all to think about what would it be like to create your work when you are filling yourself up with loving and joyful energy. 
Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. I think that is very good. And I think uh, one good point to make on this is that it doesn't mean that we're going to be painting flowers and roses, right? Right. So the sub is related, not necessarily strictly related to the subject matter, but the, the attitude and the approach that we take towards the making right. of the art. Uh, you know, it could be an artist making something related to, for example, the environment or whatever, or the abstract work, but it still is, is what comes from the inside, right? That love, that passion that we can translate mm -hmm. into every stroke that we put on that canvas mm -hmm. or on, or, you know, that sculpture that we're creating, whatever it is, and uh, that it will translate that that energy that we, I think is, you know, I feel that, you know, if we could have like a machine that would scan art for the energy that the artist puts in it, it would be really interesting, right? And I think <laughs> your point, you know, if when you are making your work out of with love and, and passion, you know, that artwork will glow in some strange way because that energy that you're putting into it versus when, as you talk about at the beginning versus when you are now, you're just, you're mm. just cranking art for cranking art, you know, because it, it, it fits a market, but it's really not where your heart is at. I love that you brought that up because when I was going through trauma recovery and I was using art to express all this pain that I had within me, I was doing that from a place of strength. Mm -hmm. And so even though I was painting this process of, yeah. of getting out sadness, the artwork wasn't sad. It was actually strong and it showed this transition of moving through it in a way. And I, I know the audience picked up on that because when I had a show about it, I was able to talk to you everyone who attended and what they thought and what their feelings were about the work. And I mean, I was able to connect so deeply with the people in that show around this story and around the artwork that was, you know, being made through it and that they resonated with it too. And then they shared their story with me. And I think that's the power of creating artwork is to be able to express and share yourself with the work, which acts as this connector with you and your audience. And I think that is such a powerful way to bring people towards the work that you're doing is by creating from this place that actually is going to pull people in. Right. I love that. And that connects to your story, right? It's, it's, exactly. It's your story that, that is being uh, really made visible through the work that you create. And I think, you know, everything that you've been talking about is things that we all uh, can relate to, right? Or relate with. And at the end of the day, I think art that relates to a person on the other side uh, is art that is welcome. Right. So if you're loving yourself and if you're trusting yourself through the process and you're listening to yourself through the process, you're going to create art that you love every time. And if it feels hard, then just check back in with yourself. How is your energy? How are your emotions? How are your thoughts? Like we have to be aware of all of these things because all of that gets brought into the work mm -hmm. and all of that gets felt by the audience. And I think we forget about that. It's not just paint on a canvas. It's so much more that we're not even noticing. And I think that when we go through this process and we set ourselves up for success in that way, then even after we create the work and we're trying to sell the work, then that continues to show up in the process as well. So we have to be very mindful of what's going on within us so that what's coming out of us is actually done with intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. 100% agree on that. But I think that is so on point and so exciting, uh, you know, to hear you with so such passion to talk about this because it's such a such, such a big truth, you know, and uh, although we sometimes have talked about this, but I think, you know, dedicating a, an episode specific to that, I think is super important. And, uh, you know, it's something that definitely we had to keep in mind. I always, you know, when I think about, you know, loving the art that I make, I'm always thinking about loving the process, right? Loving the, mm -hmm. the action of walking in the studio and, you know, and getting getting my hands dirty and sometimes even, you know, even, even the, uh, the struggle that sometimes you have with resolving a work of art, that's still loving, you know, the, the art, the thing that you're talking about, that doesn't mean that everything's going to be super easy, but actually even the struggles become something that you enjoy because you really want to resolve it. You really want to, uh, you know, make the best work that you can possibly can, I think at the end of the day. Exactly. And a good story always has conflict, right? And so right. <laughs> if we experience that struggle in the piece, but then we resolve it in the piece, then great. The audience is going to pick up on that and they're going to, you know, feel that as well. And we all love a great story that the outcome is, you, you know, we're winning at this. And so that is why, like, I wanted to talk about this topic today is because what I have done is 
I have taken everything I have learned over the last decade from being an artist, showing work, selling work, and leading an artist community with thousands and thousands of other artists. And I have distilled down everything I have learned and put it into a training that I am doing tomorrow on Thursday. And today is actually the last day to register. So if you would like to join me on my training, I would love to have you. All you have to do is just go over to my profile, click the link in my bio, check out my um, application page, fill out a quick little kind of two question form, and then I will send you the details on how you can join me for my private training on Thursday. I'm going to be going over my three-part framework for overcoming uh, creative blocks and everything else that I have learned along the way, including uh, case studies from artists I've worked with. And it's just gonna be a lot of fun. And I really hope that you'll be able to join me tomorrow and um, fill out that application. So as soon as you're done watching this video and sharing this video, <laughs> go, fill, go fill out my application page and I will connect with you as soon as I get your application. So Ready. I would love it if you could come. And I just can't wait to share everything I've learned with all of these amazing artists, because I know what it's like to be stuck and need to make a big change or to, you know, feel like I'm experiencing self-doubt or um, feeling like low self-confidence. And so we're going to talk about all these things tomorrow. That's amazing. That is good. And, you know, Beth and I, you and I, we've been collaborating for now well over a year. And I've seen, you know, the love and passion that you're putting behind uh, this new work that you just released. And uh, so I'm super excited for it. Can't wait to check it out, too. I think it's amazing. And, uh, you know, inviting to all the friends to definitely got to do it. You got to do it. You know, click on the link. We can put the link in the description. Go check that out because uh, I think it's going to be fabulous. And uh, if you have enjoyed these little 10 minute little mini chats that we have every Wednesday, <laughs> you know, just imagine you know, having Beth for a whole hour there you know, uh, to connect with and to learn from so. Oh yeah. With slides and organization and everything. <laughs> like, I mean, we're going to be like rocking and rolling through this training. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I can't wait to see you there. Can't wait to get your application. And thank you so much, Sergio for, you know, hosting us every Wednesday here. And I'm just so grateful that I'm able to connect with so many artists all over the world, just through our videos that we've been doing, because it has just warmed my heart and shown me the beauty of what art can do. And I, I mean, I already knew that before, but it's just nice to be reminded every single day. And the more I'm connecting with artists, the more I'm seeing that beauty everywhere I go. Very cool. Awesome. That's, well, that's thank you for event. watching. Yes. And, and, I, and we need to get the viewers to connect with you as well. So where can they find you online? Yes, of course. If you want to connect with me, find me on Instagram. That's kind of like my home base at Sergio Gomez mm -hmm. Art. And of course, if you want to find me on the web, SergioGomezOnline.com. And you guys can find me at Beth English on both Facebook and Instagram and at BethEnglish.com. And if you're going to join me tomorrow, go to BethEnglish.com forward slash apply and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching awesome. and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.